Hello and welcome to Flicks Planed, the channel where we take your favorite flicks and series and break them down for you to ensure you don't miss a single detail. Today, we're going to be discussing Netflix's new series, 1899, which has recently taken the streaming world by storm. The first season of 1899 was the sort of series that, at times, made you feel like you knew everything that was going on, but then immediately after, it left you scratching your head wondering what was actually going on. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down everything that happened in Netflix's 1899, including how the first season ended. So beware of spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. The first episode of the show opens up with us meeting the show's main protagonist, Dr. Maura Franklin, who was sailing aboard a steamship named Kerberos. Maura was played by Emily Beecham, who did an amazing job bringing a character with as much depth as Maura to life. As the series begins, we found out that Kerberos was on a voyage to North America, and with the ship came thousands of European migrants looking to start their lives over in New York City. The series was set in 1899, at least, that's what the showrunners would have had us believe at first. Everything quickly began to change once the show began to take off. We found out almost immediately that the Kerberos actually had a sister ship that was built identically to it, named Prometheus. It mysteriously vanished while out at the sea about four months before the beginning of the show. Now, if you're a fan of ancient mythology, specifically Greek mythology, then you might recognize the two beings that both of these ships were named after. The Kerberos was named after Cerberus, a multi-headed dog that is said to be guarding the gates of the underworld in order to prevent the dead from escaping. And then there's Prometheus. It was a Titan in Greek mythology that stole fire from the gods in order to give it to humans, which led to mankind's advancement. And in return, Prometheus was punished by having his liver eaten by an eagle repeatedly for the rest of eternity. Like a sort of time loop. And interestingly enough, all the passengers that we meet throughout the series seem to be in sort of a time loop as well. But there are deeper implications as well. As we saw in the first two episodes of 1899, the passengers that we meet on board the Kerberos had all been separated by their social and economic standing. In other words, you have the people in the upper class who are seen as wealthy that get to enjoy their voyage in what seems like the lap of luxury. And then as you go further down into the lower levels of the ship, you have the lower class passengers who are kept below deck, away from the wealthy. And finally, at the bottom of the ship, you have the workers who spend every waking hour shoveling coal into the furnaces to keep the ship sailing. But, we quickly learn that in this story, social class didn't matter. Everyone's interactions with one another was practically inevitable. As I watched through 1899 for the first time, it wasn't long before there started being noticeable hints that things weren't quite as they appeared. But that really kicks into gear when the captain of Kerberos, Eik Larson, decided to follow a signal that he believed was coming from the missing Prometheus, which was the first of multiple decisions that left the rest of his crew and many of the passengers on board feeling uneasy. Well. It turned out that the signal that Kerberos was receiving did in fact come from the Prometheus. However, once they boarded the once missing vessel, Mora and Larson quickly realized that almost everyone on board had disappeared somehow. Almost everyone. The only person left on Prometheus was a young boy named Elliot. And after meeting Mora, Elliot immediately presented her with a small black stone-like pyramid, which will end up playing a key role in the show's first season. But we'll get there. After discovering Prometheus, Captain Lawson became plagued by memories of his past, and at one point, he even seemed to teleport into one of his own memories. We saw Ake at his family's home, where we learned that his family had died in a terrible fire that burned them all alive. While reliving this terrible memory, a colorful beetle presented itself to Lawson, and he followed up the chimney of his family's home, where he found a secret hatch that led into his room on board Kerberos. And as the season continued, we slowly learned that almost, if not all, the passengers would have secret hatches in their rooms that would lead them to their own memories. Things took another turn at the end of the second episode, when it was revealed that someone in a room somewhere was monitoring the lives of every passenger on the Kerberos through the use of screens and cameras that definitely did not exist during 1899. Yet another hint that things in this show were not what they seemed. On top of that, the next episode revealed that there was a new person that somehow just appeared on the ship named Daniel. And right away, you can tell that there was something strange about him. Using a colorful beetle, a common symbol used throughout the show, Daniel was able to lure the daughter of a Danish family over to him before he ultimately killed her and hid her body. Her death was something that they decided to try to conceal from the Danish family, which only made things on board Kerberos even tenser. Then, once the captain decided that Kerberos was going to turn around so that it can tow Prometheus back to London, that was the final straw. Turning back towards London, plus various other passengers on the ship turning up dead, 
that apportioned the crew and passengers to mutiny against Ake. And in a panic caused by the chaos of those around her turning on each other, the mother of the young Danish girl that was killed decided that everything that was going wrong on the ship was because of Elliot, the boy they found on Prometheus. And during the mutiny, he was eventually thrown overboard by the angry mob of people on Kerberos. While the passengers revolted against their captain, the mysterious strange Daniel was up to something in the engine room. Using an odd looking machine, he was able to somehow teleport the Kerberos back to its original route toward North America. At some point during the mutiny, Elliot somehow ended up reappearing on the ship which caused the passengers to lock him in a cabinet. And when Maura decided that she needed to intervene to save Elliot, a boy whom she was somehow connected to, something even stranger happened. Time literally stopped around her and Elliot, which gave her the perfect chance to escape with him, away from all the fighting. Episode 5 of 1899 is when things take another major step towards some answers. However, it came at the cost of a lot of lives. Toward the beginning of the episode, everyone on the ship began hearing this noise that began calling to them, and somehow seducing them into walking right off the side of the ship. The only passengers who managed to save their own lives were the ones that saw the danger and the noise and decided to tie themselves to furniture on board so that they couldn't walk themselves to their deaths. During the episode, Mora also decided that she needed some answers of her own and began to question Elliot. Now Elliot, up until that point, made sure to not say a single word, and it was revealed why when he handed Mora a small piece of paper with the phrase, they are listening. This implied multiple things, including that Elliot most likely knew about the screen room that we saw at the end of episode 2, and that he knows more than he was letting on. It's too bad for Mora that she can only get answers from someone known as the creator. At least, that's what Elliot told her when he whispered in her ear when he told her that she needed to ask the creator. Later on, while inside one of her memories, Mora was shown walking through the asylum that she had envisioned earlier in the season. It's there that Mora ran into her father, Henry, who was carrying a syringe filled with some sort of black liquid. When she saw her father, Mora questioned him about her brother Chiron, wondering where he was, as he was the person who sent her the letter that led her to the Kerberos in the first place. However, before she could get any answers, her father injected her with a syringe, and before we knew it, Mora was waking up in her room on the Kerberos, as if it was simply a bad dream. Another interesting reveal that they used Henry for was when we saw him receiving encrypted messages from the first mate on the ship, which let us know that he had people on the ship monitoring the situation for him all along. It was in that scene that we also saw the doctor looking out of his office window, a massive black stone pyramid that was basically a much larger version of the one that Elliot gave to Mora when they first met. And it wasn't long before Mora ended up back at the asylum, only this time she wouldn't be alone. She and Ake were shown in the asylum together, looking out at the same pyramid that her father was looking out at. It was then that the pair came to the realization that they were somehow still on the Kerberos. A short while later though, Daniel would appear at the asylum, and when Ake threatened him, Daniel mysteriously teleported the captain to the Prometheus, and that was flowing in a sort of ship graveyard. The final two episodes of the season are when things really ramped up, and we in the audience finally got a glimpse of what was really going on. Or at least that's what we assume so far. Who knows what season two might hold? In the final episode of the season, Daniel revealed his identity to Mora and informed her that they were married and that Elliot was actually their son. However, it's then that it was implied that something tragic happened to him, and Elliot ended up dying in real life, which resulted in a grief-stricken Mora making a simulation where she would get to see him again. This is where we learned a lot about the true motives behind some of the more mysterious characters. When Daniel and Elliot believed that they needed to help Mora because she was the only one who could free them from the simulation, Mora's father had a more sinister motive. Henry's main goal is to get his hands on the key that was in Mora's necklace that he believed would allow him to control the simulation for himself. Mora then discovered that the key would allow her and others to free themselves from the simulation. However, at that time she didn't know that the key she was looking for was around her neck. Now, somewhere down the line, 1899 made it seem as though Henry had managed to turn Elliot over to his side, which prompted Elliot to inject Mora with the black liquid. The initial plan for this was to have the simulation be reset back to the beginning with none of the passengers knowing about it. However, thanks to Daniel, Mora was able to maintain her consciousness about the current simulation that they had been trapped in while being sent to her and Daniel's original simulation. And while tampering with the code to keep Mora in the current simulation, Daniel also happened to change the Blackstone Pyramid into one of Elliot's old toys and change the key into Mora's wedding ring. 
Once Mora was prompted to place the key into the pyramid, that finally put an end to it. It's also revealed that the simulation that they were trapped in was one that had been taken over by Chiron, Mora's brother. And in order to stop him and save everyone else that was trapped in the simulation, Mora had to finally complete it. After placing the ring into the pyramid, Mora finally woke up. Only this time, she was on a very different sort of ship. Instead of being on a steamship in 1899, it was revealed that all of the passengers were actually in a sort of stasis, while traveling on a spaceship through the stars in a year that was supposedly 2099. The season ended with Mora receiving a message from Chiron that read, Hello sister, welcome to reality. The season ended with the song Starman blasting in the background, and with us, the viewers, riddled with questions about what's to come. What do you think is going to happen in season 2 of 1899? Do you think the spaceship is just another layer to the simulation? Or do you think Mora actually woke up? Make sure you let us know in the comments below! And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out our upcoming video discussing a handful of facts about Netflix's 1899 that you might not have known. 